Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the Photo Video Show, where we explore all things photography. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and on today's show, I'm finally getting to those film convert videos that I've been promising you guys. I know I've been putting it on the back burner for such a long time, but uh, I'm finally doing them here. I'm remedying that, remedying, I'm going to remedy that problem right now. So this is the first part of the video, and it's basically going to be helping you guys set up your camera so that you can get the best results out of converting your video footage into a emulated film stock. So without further ado, let's get started. So once you're ready to get into your camera, let's just go ahead and go into menu. And most cameras, whether they be Sony or otherwise, are gonna have certain settings that are fairly similar to each other in order to achieve the same goals. Not every camera is the same, so I don't want to mislead anyone into thinking that all cameras are gonna have the exact same settings. But the camera that I'm working with is the Sony A6000. And when you're going to try and edit your videos and make them look like film, you have to give your videos the best chance possible to look good. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a file format that has the greatest amount of data in the file. So that would be the XAVCS. So once I select that, what I want to do next is I want to go to my recording setting and I want to pick the codec and the frame rate that is best going to match what I'm planning on doing. If you want something that looks like film, acts like film, moves like film, the 24P is your best bet. And uh, obviously with XAVCS uh, codec, all of them are 50 megabits per second. This is the highest uh, bit depth that the Sony A6000 can generate currently. And uh, if you don't have the XAVCS on your camera, it's probably because you haven't done the firmware update yet. But if you want your video to look a little bit more like video, choose the 30P. And if you're interested in capturing a lot of frames, uh, go up to 60P. And what you can do is you can actually slow that footage down. You can transform that footage down to like 30p, or you can even bring it down to 24 frames per second, and you will get a slow motion effect. So uh, for this particular case, I'm going to use the 24p 50 megabits per second because most of the stuff that I do, I want it to look as much like film as I possibly can get it. So choose that. Um, Next thing that I'm going to do, and you can you can do this if you want, uh, is ISO should never be set on auto. If your camera has an auto ISO setting, what's going to happen is that you're going to expose for the bright spot or the dark spot, and then as you move your camera through the scene, it's going to have different levels of brightness or darkness, and then the auto ISO is going to try and set that for you. So if you have it in auto ISO, you can see that it automatically compensates, but when you actually choose a, back in the day, it was called ASA, so it was a film sen sensitivity. So what we wanna do is we want to find a good film sensitivity. Right around ISO 400 is what most old school uh, film stocks were usually shot on. It's a good starting point. 400 or 800 is usually a good starting point. Uh, just remember that with these digital cameras, the lower the ISO, the cleaner the image is going to be. So um, next, we have something on Sony cameras only that as far as I know, there it, it might be on some other cameras, but they have something that's called uh, dynamic range optimizer. Well, we all know that dynamic range is basically the amount of information um, that a camera can see all the way into the shadows, all the way up to your highlights. Well, the dynamic range optimizer allows me to see deeper into the shadows and allows me to see deeper into the highlights without the highlights clipping and being blown out and deeper into the shadows without them getting crushed and completely blacked out as well. So. Um, I set it when I'm getting ready to use film convert or some sort of film stock emulator. I choose the dynamic range optimizer level five. Uh, most of the time, if I'm just going to be taking uh, photographs, 
I'll usually set it to DRO level one or DR DRO level two. Um, and that's pretty standard, I would say. Most people want a little extra dynamic range, uh, both in video and film. Uh, that's, a, that's an artificial way of increasing the uh, sensitivity in the shadows and the highlights. So that's just a little thing that I do. It might help you out, it might not, but uh, it usually ends up working out pretty good for me. Now here is where most cameras are gonna stay pretty much the same. Every camera has picture styles. Uh, with Sony, it's called a creative style. They have standard, vivid, neutral, clear. I think they have deep, light. They have a lot of different ones. Portrait. Uh, but when you're trying to do film conversion, you want your picture style to be as flat as possible. You don't want the camera uh, or its software to do any level of uh, adjustments for you. So on the Sony a6000, the flattest, most neutral picture style that it currently has is a picture style called neutral. But I take it a step further, I reduce the contrast all the way down, I will reduce the saturation all the way down, and I will also reduce the sharpness all the way down. I don't want my camera doing any sharpness, any saturation, or any contrast for me whatsoever. I want to be able to add that to my videos on my own and if I allow the camera to do it it's probably not going to look as good um, having some uh, nonlinear uh, editors or some uh, some sort of editing software on a nice big powerful machine uh, that can apply colors and saturation and the contrast and the sharpness just the way you want where you can really fine-tune those things that's what you want you don't want the camera to do that work for you so this is the best way that I have been able to get uh, the flattest picture style possible without actually having uh, S-Log uh, or S-Log 2 or S-Log Gamut uh, or any of those types of picture styles that are available on the higher price cameras. Um, but if you want the flattest picture style possible, just choose a neutral picture style and then if you are able to adjust the contrast, the saturation, and the sharpness yourself, crank those as far down as possible. The camera is still going to record uh, the data that you need in order to edit it in your editor, but it's not gonna be required to be done in the camera. So just wait on that and do it once you get uh, back over to your editing program. So there you have it, there you go folks. I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know that you appreciated the content and part two will be coming very, very soon. So thanks again for stopping here at the Photo Video Show. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and I will see you guys again on the next one. Peace.